I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're delighted to introduce you to a fabulous author. His name is Steve Calamura, and he has written a captivating memoir called Come Ride With Me, Memoirs of a Paramedic. This book offers a thrilling and heart-wrenching insight into the life of a veteran paramedic, showcasing over two decades of life-saving calls, challenges, and triumphs in a high-stakes profession. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Steve, great to see you here today. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Thanks for having me and for the opportunity. My pleasure. Your book covers over 20 years of experiences as a paramedic. Can you share what you think is one of your most memorable calls? Uh, one of my most memorable, uh, memorable calls was uh, a, a kid named Eric Oliveri. He uh, was hit by a 10 ton piece of steel and uh, I have permission to tell his story. It was a, a co-op gone wrong. He was asked to do something that was extremely unsafe and he paid for it dearly. Uh, when I came to him, he, his body was broken beyond recognition. And when we rushed him to the hospital, uh, I didn't think that he would ever walk again. That's how serious his injuries were. So I came to visit him a few days later and he was all casted up, just like in the movies, mm -hmm. just a like whole a full body, body cast, cast unable to move. And again, I didn't think he would walk again. Well, six months later, he comes to thank me and surprised me. And he was walking with the cane. He had an uncontrollable tremor. And he said, I'm going to be a paramedic. Mm -hmm. And my partner was there that day that uh, helped me that day. And we kind of shot each other an unresolved look. And, you know, we thought with his injuries, we weren't we weren't able to uh, uh, be sure if he was going to be able to be a paramedic. Right. And sure enough, in two years, he put on muscle. He got off the pain medications and he became my student, one of my best students. Wow. And I celebrated him. Uh, sorry, celebrated with him as uh, he passes paramedic provincial exam. Wow, that's amazing. It's an amazing story because it's from start to finish. The human body is remarkably resilient, but you are there within the golden minutes, let's say, when it'll be decided whether that person lives or dies. If you can get them to the hospital, often the doctors can save them, but that life-giving care that you give immediately upon response makes all the difference in the world, right? Only in certain amount of cases. I actually talked with my uh, partner, his name's Ian, that I work with now, and there is a very narrow window of when our treatment matters. Mm -hmm. I would say a rough estimate, maybe 1% of the time. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, Sometimes we get there and nothing we can do is ever going to help that, that patient, right. right? Sometimes either they've been gone too long and, you know, um, we don't do anything or the injuries or morbidity that they have sustained is so great that nothing we can do can help them. But maybe 1% of the time, it might be even uh, smaller than that. Our work really does matter. And that's when we have to be on our game. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, just like cops and firefighters in a way, most of the time it's a kitchen fire or a, a domestic argument and nothing's going to escalate and it's gonna be fine. But you always have to be ready for that 1% of calls, which could escalate into something big and could mean the difference between life and death depending on your actions, right? Yes, that's something that we have in common with all first responders. Like you said, like a lot of police work is mundane and we meet up with them a lot on their calls. And I've talked to them in the hospitals and on accident scenes. And when it really matters, it, like you said, it, it's a very, very narrow window. But that's that's the challenge that I like I uh, as being a paramedic is is getting into that window, being able to focus and being able to perform in those 1% of calls where things really do matter. Now, oftentimes you are called into very high pressure situations. Uh, you have to be very adaptable, learn to work in different environments. Tell us about that part of the job. 
One of the calls that I went into, I was up on top of a crane in a six by six pulpit. Mm -hmm. And there are certain decisions that you have to make, you know, in, in the textbook scenarios, everything is perfect, or they might throw a curveball at you, but you basically verbalize everything. When you're faced with that physical environment where you have to make a decision where maybe I'm, I'm not going to do a breathing tube in this situation, I can't reach it. Or maybe I have to do, say, an IV with my opposite hand because I'm just, I just don't have the room. Or maybe I have to omit some treatments because the environment doesn't allow us to. Uh, one of the decisions I had to make in, in that environment was I'm going to have to do all my treatment on this pulpit and see where it goes before I call rope rescue, because that, that's what we needed to get this guy off the crane. It was, it was I think, about 30 or 40 feet up in the air, and we we're providing uh, life resuscitating treatment on this little pulpit. And um, the rescue, the rope rescue was assembling, and they said, it's going to take us 12 minutes to get him down. And, you know, feeding that information while doing things and thinking, you know, 12 minutes okay, I'm going to have to do a lot here because I can't stop my resuscitation because he won't have any chances. And again, those are um, those are decisions. And that's what I really like about the job is being able to go into these situations, come up with a plan in a very short period of time, execute it and uh, have it hopefully, hopefully have the best outcome for patients. Absolutely. Are you still working as a paramedic? Yes, yes. Um, I'll be heading into my 23rd year with uh, basically just this service. I had a very small stint with a neighboring service in Niagara for about uh, a year, but I've been with the Hamilton Paramedic Service now for almost 23 years. Wonderful. And over those 23 years, do you feel like the experience has made you stronger and better at what you do? Absolutely. Um, we also have a very, very good um, peer support network. And I have a very good outlet for everything. Of course, whenever we talk about first responders and uh, um, PTSD, right, comes up a lot, right? How, how, how do you deal with that? And, you know, over the years, because we had nothing when I first started, and as things progressed, and I, I'd like to mention Bell Mobility, they have a, a mental health day, right? They've brought that into the, that into the spotlight. Right. And it has become less shameful to have uh, post-traumatic stress. And we've all helped each other during this. And uh, like I said, we have a peer support team now that really helps us through those difficult calls that um, uh, really crush a lot of careers. They really do. And it's something that we don't like to talk about, but uh, um, it's something that's necessary. And uh, throughout the years, it's taught me how to be stronger, to build upon those experiences and the other thing is I have a great family life and a great outside life, outside my paraphenic life to help me through those times. Exactly. Because people don't realize what you see. Uh, you're seeing people in car wrecks where children are mangled. Uh, you're seeing people uh, burnt beyond recognition. Uh, so you see a lot of things that the average person doesn't see. And then you see them in a concentrated form where you're constantly sent to the worst, darkest, baddest, most dangerous, life-threatening aspects of life, right? Yes, and uh, I think one of the things that helps us, right? And I've actually thought a lot about this, Mr. Crawford, about war, PTSD, and first responder PTSD. And one thing I get to do is I get to come home at the end of my shift. Mm. And like I said, I have a very good support network. I've been uh, practicing martial arts for over 30 years now. That's one of my outlets to, to help me with uh, uh, my, my stress and my job. And I have uh, two daughters, Monaco and Kohana, and a wonderful wife that uh, I spend time with. And this helps me decompress. And one of the things about wartime is they didn't get to decompress. Yeah. They, they, they had these traumatic experiences and they had to go to battle the next day. They didn't even get to go home. And I'm finding throughout the years that these little things that happen, these, uh, sorry, I would say the little breaks that happen, getting to come home, getting to do mm -hmm. this, getting to do that, right, have really helped me decompress from the stressful situations at work. Exactly. Much better to come home to your daughters and your wife and a nice home as opposed to being in a tent with a guy you just, you know, were in combat with. You know, it's just a, a different experience. Part of it's identical where you're seeing a lot of carnage, but the afterwards is different. And I'm sure that is helpful. What do you hope readers take away from your book? 
You know, I hope they uh, uh, take away that uh, being a paramedic just just isn't a drive to the hospital. You know, um, when I first got into the job, I was 19. I signed up for it and I thought, you know, I'm I'm going to do some first aid with a first aid box and drive people to the hospital. And it's it's much more than that. In fact, if I could mention one of my favorite chapters in the book is Till Death Do Us Part. And it's uh, mm-hmm. I get to see elderly people in in their last stages of life and they still love each other they they're still holding their hand like they're teenagers and giving each other that goodbye kiss and the wonderful people that i meet and that's one thing that i'd like the readers to take away is that uh it's it, it very much is a life experience being a paramedic yeah and also you are very comforting to the people i mean i've been in that situation where my parents have been carried out of the house um on a stretcher and uh you know Uh, a kind word from someone like yourself, the care that you take with someone's father, it makes all the difference in the world because each life is precious, of course. Yes, and uh, uh, in those times, that's one of the faults that I I, I would like to say that I had early on in my career. I was not very good at that because I was so zoned in Hmm. on getting that patient out with that patient. But now with experience, as we spoke of earlier, right, building upon that and becoming better, is is comforting those family members. You know what? We're going to do the best for you, for your dad. Okay, yeah. your dad's going to be okay, right? Yeah. Stuff like that that I I am able to incorporate in now, and those are the things that people remember too. It's it's not so much the uh, the medical drama, the the technicalities of it. It's 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 the uh, bedside manner, as I like to call it. Absolutely, absolutely. And I was going to say the same thing. It's like a doctor developing his bedside manner. It makes all the difference in the world. And obviously that comes with experience and comes with time on the job. I think Come Ride With Me would be an awesome uh, film, whether you did it as a documentary or whether you did it as a uh, as a fictional series, even because you could fictionalize some of the events. Do you agree? Have you, in visual- have you uh, visualized this at all? It, it's kind of funny. I, I have. I've. Uh, um, if you're familiar with the movie uh, Act of Valor, right? It was done yes. with real uh, Navy SEALs. And what they did, they took a template and they took five missions that these Navy SEALs went on and they wove a story in between them. Because mm. my my book doesn't have a story. You have to have a story if you're going to make a movie or, or, or a TV series. And uh, if I were to do that or it w- if it would be done... You could weave these calls and write a story about it, write a story about an individual or a group of paramedics, which if if the actors were there, I'd have to include Ken Jeong and, and Seth Rogen, <laughs> because I think uh, comedy relief in any serious situation is is uh, uh, is a great healer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brings it to life. And you guys, are, I'm a, I was a news reporter for many, many years sitting in a car with a photographer. You can be in the d- worst situations in the world and you still have like silly laughs with your partner because it breaks up the stress. It breaks up the monotony. Um, that's for sure. And don't forget that wonderful series from the 1970s, Emergency 911. Oh, actually, <laughs> yes. I, I had the I had the toy cars. That was uh, uh, my mom got me that. And she used to watch it with Johnny Gage and Roy DeSoto and the, exactly. the big, huge honking phone. Now we've got cell phones that do everything. Exactly. Yeah. But it was a great show. And it was brought together by the relationships that they had with each other and with their dispatcher, which I don't know if you know, is Julie London, who is a great songstress also, by the way. So Google Julie London's music later on. It's amazing. I'll but anyway, Steve, you have done a wonderful job with this book. It is called Come Ride With Me, Memoirs of a Paramedic. This book offers a thrilling and heart-wrenching insight into the life of a veteran paramedic. Some of these stories, you're going to actually just take your time Think about them, read them through, and be truly wowed and amazed. Steve, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much, Mr. Crawford. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.